Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I want to do a plant video. I don't think I've done a plant video on my channel yet before. So I really want to just go around and show you guys all of my plants. Because if you're a gardener, I guess I consider myself a gardener now. I mean, this is my second year, right? So I'm kind of a gardener, maybe. But I have been like an indoor plant gardener for if that's a thing, for a few years now. It's probably been about since 2018. So I have quite the accumulation of plants and I probably wouldn't be able to envision my life without plants because I've had them for so long now and I'm so used to taking care of them and having them in my environment, in my home, wherever I'm living at the time. Since we've kind of put down some roots here at our house, I've definitely accumulated some more over the last year and a half. And I mean like this plant, I don't know what you'd call it, obsession? Because it's spring and all of my plants are sprouting new growth and just looking really beautiful. If you have plants, then you know that around springtime, you kind of, your head gets back into that plant game where there's like this switch in your head and you're like, oh my gosh, plants. And that's all you can think about. And that's all you want to do. And yeah, so that's kind of like the mood I'm in. I'm going to start over here by my uh, shelf by my back door. In this little shelf, I would consider my grow station. Well, for actual gardening, it's really intended. It was intended. It was put up here for the purpose of growing seedlings. But my indoor gardener mind has taken over and it has kind of made its way onto this shelf. <laughs> Down here is, I showed in my last video too, just um, gardening things. And then down here is more like plant pots. I'm going to have to clear all of this stuff once it's time to plant some more vegetables and flowers and stuff. But for now, I'm just going to leave it how it is because I only need to start onions. Which leads me to how great these guys are growing it's only been i don't know a week maybe look at those beautiful onions i'm so excited it's liking the light so that's good news and it's liking this area i've heard that once seedlings germinate and they start coming up out of the dirt then you can go ahead and take off your little humidity box thing and so that's what I did I'm not really sure if that's the right way to do it I just don't want it getting too moist in there just because of how humid it is in my state already I think they'll truly be fine and they look like they're doing just perfect they're growing so much I think almost every single cell has sprouted at least one so far that is not what this video is about this video is about my house plants <laughs> I just so excited um i'm just gonna start on this little shelf here i have a little bit more here and then i have some there on top of my fridge and then just the rest of my house this guy i got from valentine's day from my mom it was a plant pot of three different plants so it was this cactus or cacti i really don't know the name of this one i'll find it and put it up on the screen for you guys but on valentine's day it was so pretty and it was blooming and it just looks really pretty and i think it's a very easy succulent i think to take care of i'm honestly not really sure what it is but i think it's a succulent this one is a philodendron moonlight this one isn't doing super great as well i really don't know what i'm doing wrong i think it enjoys the area it's just i 
think I'm watering it a little too much. So I'm going to try and let it dry out a little bit. I got it from a local nursery and the sticker says to keep moderately moist. But I think I take that as like an always moist, like always keep it moist. So I'm going to see what it does if it, you know, letting it dry out, not all the way, but at least the top of the soil, just like a regular philodendron. The tips of the leaves that are browning are, they're not like crunchy, maybe this very, very tip is, but it's like very watery feeling and very squishy feeling. Also, I think it was this side, it was like a water bubble almost and I popped it, it was really weird. I've never, experienced that before with the plant. So I think I'm, I'm just overwatering this one too much. Hopefully by letting it just sit here, I would say it's pretty indirect light. I don't know what window, I think this is a, I don't have any south facing windows. I think this is a north facing window or north west. I'm not sure, but that leads me to this guy. He loves this window. This is a Cebu blue and I absolutely love this plant. It's really, really pretty. And I love that it has like that blue hue tint to it. This one has been doing pretty well, keeping it pretty moist but I'm gonna see what it does just to dry it out a little bit because again, I don't wanna overwater this. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm doing with the moonlight, but this one, this one as well has some new growth, which is exciting, but this one does right here. It has a new little leaf coming in, a couple little new leaves. So that's pretty cool and exciting. I love this plant. It's really pretty and it enjoys this, spot right here right next to the window next i have this rubber tree rubber plant in this little propagation um spice glass <laughs> this was an epic fail on my part i've had this rubber plant for i'll insert a picture here i know i have one somewhere but it used to be so big-ish, like six inches tall and six inches. Yeah, maybe about six inches. Um, and it was doing really good. I've had it for a few years, but all of a sudden the leaves started falling off and looking really scraggly. And the only thing that was left was the tip of it. So I, just learned really i don't know how i've been able to keep this plant alive for so long maybe just forgetting about it and not watering it a lot kind of helped it thrive because it really doesn't like to be watered it doesn't like to be consistently moist i think i've heard that it likes to just dry out and also the place i had it in wasn't getting a lot of light at all and the videos i've been watching on the rubber tree plants they like a lot of sunlight specifically in a like the brightest window you have in your house south facing like right next to the window and that i did not have it i did dig it up today the whole root system which i guess we're on the topic now i'll just grab it and holy moly it's heavy i put it i know this won't grow like I know, but I think it looks super cool in this red vase. You can see all of the root roots and the root system in there. And it has this little bare stem sticking up. So I have that on my shelf over here, just kind of taking up space, looking cool. I wanted to utilize this little stem root ball thing instead of just throwing it away because I would have just thrown it away anyways but I thought that was kind of cool we'll see I have a little bit of hope even though I'm pretty sure it won't do anything 
I still have that teeny bit of hope. I'm just turning you guys over a little bit closer to the window. This is my Hartley philodendron and I have many of these from, I think I've propagated from one mother plant, I think. And I think this was a propagation. There's actually two different propagations in this. I'll just take this out. In this pot. So where this was before I put it next to the window, it was next to my front window, which is also above the heater. And I kept forgetting to water it. And so it got really leggy. And the only thing left was this big, huge leaf or branch stem thing, this thing. And then I had some propagations in the works. And so I just kind of filled the pot a little bit with those propagations. So hopefully those seem like they're doing fine so far. As they grow, they'll kind of fill out the pot a little bit more. And I really, really love Hartley philodendrons. They're probably one of my favorite houseplants just because they're so easy to take care of. Most philodendrons in my experience that I've had are pretty resilient. Um, I mean, I guess they're kind of like any other plant they would rather dry out than be overwatered, And so if you kind of just put them in a spot where they get a decent amount of light and water them every couple weeks, maybe I was getting to like once a month. <laughs> but let's just say it was starting to die. So don't, don't do that. When it completely just dries out and doesn't do doesn't do well philodendrons i love up on my top shelf here i have some more propagations this is a philodendron hartley same one um that i did last night and these are also really really easy to propagate they would i would say they would take a couple weeks for them to start sprouting and yeah i love I love the look of propagated plants in just water and clear glasses. I think it looks really pretty. The only thing I'm really horrible at about water propagated plants is I forget to change the water sometimes. I'm not really great about it. Um, this is the same. This is our, yeah, this is our leaf philodendron. So I have a few of them in the works. And then here, this guy is a newer plant that I have gotten, Jade. We'll see, I have two of these now, but we'll see if I'll be able to keep it alive. I have it in this really cool pot. It's like a skull head. I really like it. Um, but it's just a cover pot for now. And it fits pretty good in here. And it's on the top shelf, so you're not really able to see the outline of the red pot we'll see we'll see how we do and it's getting new leaves right here there's little new ones and right here those are starting to open up so so far i love the jade plants you don't have to water them because they're succulent i mean you don't have to water them that often not you don't have to water them at all you do still have to water them which is not as often now moving on to this little shelf. This is right by my back door as well. This is just across from the shelf we were just at. And we'll start off with this little guy. This guy is a ZZ plant. I have a few now because I love them. Um, also, I'm not gonna be going by any of their scientific names just because I don't know a lot of them. I'm just gonna do their nicknames because that's what I know them by. This is a ZZ plant. This was actually when I was separating my first ZZ plant, I found the little, um, I don't know what they're called in the plant world, but I'm just gonna call it a bulb because it basically is like a little small bulb. And I found it in the dirt and I'm like, oh my gosh, I wonder what would happen if I just planted this in its own little pot. And it did sprout up. It's not doing 
much though. It's been like this for a few months now. I'm not sure if it's gonna get any bigger or do anything else or just stay like this. It's fine if it does because it's it's just cute. It's like a cute little sprout, a cute little wax sprout. Next is my evergreen, my Chinese evergreen. This guy I've had for um, a few years. I think this is one of the first plants that I got. It's not really a fast grower at all, um, but it's still a very pretty, pretty easy plant to take care of. This one though, I've noticed since it's been in this spot right here by the window, it's been drying out a little easier. Um, and so it's been getting pretty thirsty, but I think it's resilient to drought. Like it'll still be like, stay alive if you forget to water it. <laughs> I mean, obviously the plants that I've had for a couple of years now that haven't died have at some point went through a drought and have survived. Some haven't, a lot haven't. <laughs> but this one is one of the ones that has. And I just really love the foliage. It's so pretty and it's just such a, I don't know. I think it's a very underrated plant in my opinion. And there's a couple little new leaves unfurling. So it's really exciting. I'm gonna put this guy back here. Below that, I have two of the same philodendron heart leaves again like I said I have quite a lot of them just because they're super easy and they're so pretty this one has some dog hair on it this one is I think this was a propagation it's getting some new little leaves there and yeah it's doing really well I love, I love this plant and then I have another one next to it which I'm not going to take off but I will kind of show you guys. The reason I'm not gonna take it out is because I kind of put this leaf up here and I'm trying to curl it around this shelf, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. And this one's a little bit bigger, kind of leggy. With some of the Hartley philodendron propagations that I have, I might even take some of those when they're ready to be planted and fill in some of my planted Hartley philodendrons just to make them look a little fuller. Now we're at my kitchen windowsill. I just put all these propagations here last night and I'm totally loving it. It looks so cute and it brings so much life into the kitchen and I'm just obsessed. I'm always gonna have propagations up here now. <laughs> this one is a regular pothos, I believe. And then this is a philodendron Brazil that I'm propagating. These I have a couple of, as well as these. And this is the heart leaf again, and then this is another heart leaf. Not gonna get a chair and get up there because I'm too lazy. <laughs> that one right here, that is a variegated pothos. And then this one in the middle there is a calathea. And then that one is supposed to be a variegated pothos, but it kind of lost its variegation. I don't know if it's not getting enough light in order to attain and keep that variegation but honestly that's okay because i still think this plant is just gorgeous little story about the whitish the the whitish um pothos that one i've had so all three of those i've had for a couple of years and the white variegated pothos uh it actually had root rot a few years ago when I used to live in my apartment and that was the first and only plant that I tried to bring back to life from root rot and I it was a success and I'm still proud of it to this day I, that was a few years ago I'm surprised shocked and I'm just so proud of myself and the plant because I really didn't think I would be able to do something like that. It's fun. <laughs> All right, moving over to the darker part of my house. Here on my wicker shelf, I have my skin, skin dapsis. This guy I really like. Um, I haven't killed it yet. So 
I'm really, I have hope for this guy. And it's, it's foliage is just gorgeous. I love it. And then down here, I have another philodendron Brazil. Yeah, I think this is a philodendron Brazil. This was potted with that first cactus I was showing you guys, the one that was flowering. They put this in a pot, as well as a pink princess and the cactus. So I had to try and separate that as soon as I could, really, and I just did. So I'm really liking this right here, and I hope this guy likes it too. Apologize for the low light in this room. Um, this room doesn't really get a lot of light, especially when it's a gloomy day. But I'm going to show you the shelf above my TV. Do not laugh at me. Okay? Just don't laugh. That is supposed to be a Boston fern <laughs> that I'm trying to bring back to life. I really don't know if it will, though. I am kind of embarrassed. <laughs> that guy is a ZZ plant, a regular, Z a regular colored ZZ plant. I, like I mentioned before, love ZZ plants. They're super easy to take care of and they're just really pretty. And then there is the other Boston fern that I have failed at. I love Boston ferns a lot and I really wish I had the skill set to keep it alive, but when they die, they're just such an annoyance because they just drop their leaves everywhere and just make a big crispy mess and I hate it. I have a dying ponytail palm. I think it needs more light so I moved it a little closer to the window. This used to be, this used to have three stems or three plants but they kind of fell off and now it's just this sad looking one. It used to look really good and really lush. I think I again have been over watering this one and it just needs more light. This one is another um, propagated partly philodendron. Like I said, I'm propagating a lot of them at the moment. And I, I don't know, I just really love those. They're super easy to take care of. Back here by my front window is my mother tree ZZ plant. This one is kind of going this way. I think it was turned towards the window, so it was growing towards the window, so I turned it. And now this new leaf is doing the same thing, so I don't know. I think it's just gonna go everywhere, but that's okay. <laughs> and then this one I just got yesterday. This is another rubber tree plant, and I'm super glad I got this. I actually got this at Fred Meyer at Kroger. And it was only $20 for this gigantic, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plant. So I really hope I don't murder this one. And then here is my snake plant. Um, I got a lucky bamboo, another snake plant. And in that corner is another snake plant. <laughs> and then I have an aloe vera right above that. Now we are in my office. And over here, I have two plants on my desk. This one is just a regular pothos. I don't think it was variegated, it's just a regular pothos. This was a propagation I did and I'm really proud. I think this is the one plant that I've propagated from water to dirt is like the one I'm very, very proud of because of how full it is. And now it's gonna start trailing off and I'm just super proud of this. I love pothos and philodendrons. They're very similar uh, plants. They really are, in my opinion. I don't really know like scientifically or care-wise, but I think they are pretty similar. That ZZ plant that I showed you guys that was out by my front window, that one is my mother's ZZ, uh, the black variety. I don't really know what the black variety is called, but this one is doing pretty good. It's getting really tall and it's also getting a new little baby there. There used to be two more, but again, I think I underwatered it and it got way too dry. This is actually a really thirsty plant. Uh, my office stays about 78 degrees because my bearded dragon's in here. So it stays very dry and warm. Uh, so most of the plants in here are 
very tolerant plants um but that pothos and then this zz gets really dried out super easy so they're very thirsty but that's okay because i sit at my desk to work and so i rarely forget about these guys but oh, it's so pretty i love this as it pokes me in the face <laughs> i love this plant have um this is the mother pothos that i think most of my propagations are from that are just the regular pothos the propagations that i have going on right now i think what i'm gonna do is when those are ready to get transplanted to dirt i think i'm gonna try and fill this pot or probably a bigger pot a little bit better because it does look a little scraggly and leggy it's very beautiful i love this plant this is also pretty thirsty because it stays in this very warm and dry room and up here on these shelves this is a philodendron in brazil i have a few of these this is actually the original one though and it is doing pretty well i just recently had to trim both of these this is the original mother philodendron heart leaf this used to be a really really pretty plant but i think it's just dried out way too much in here i gotta keep on watering it and keep on remembering to do that because it used to be really really long to where i had to when i took it out of here to water it i would have to hold it all the way above my head to make sure i don't step on the stems and the little foliage leaf thingies it is overall better for the plant's health to keep it trimmed and to promote new growth and just stay healthy and over here is another jade plant that i have and this one looks really really pretty and it's big this one i got at home depot and it's doing pretty good. It's really dry. I just watered it. Oh, making a mess. Maybe I'll have to water it again soon because it is, it's pretty dry. I only have one plant in my bathroom and that's because I only have a really, really tiny window in my shower. <laughs> And so this guy only gets very few sun lights. So he isn't really doing amazing. I mean, the f I need to clean these leaves. These uh, philodendrons and pothos, they are low light tolerant, but they won't thrive in the low light environment. So if you say this kind of like this plant has been in here for a year and a half so it hasn't died but if you want to put a philodendron or a pothos in a very low light area just make sure that you want it to stay that size and expect it to just stay that size and not grow any bigger um then that's perfectly fine like this one hasn't really grown much at all since it's been in here but really it's fine because it's not dying <laughs> last room is my bedroom this is the beautiful pink princess that was planted with the pothos in that cactus and so i'm really glad that i put it in this pot and put it in my bedroom because i i don't know it just looks so pretty here it looks like it was really meant to be right there it looks so pretty i love it <laughs> okay and then this one is i just got this at home depot and i thought it was the coolest thing ever it's like a water propagated, this is a Monstera Addisonii. Uh, I've never owned one before, so we'll see how it goes. This is a water propagation, so it'll probably do fine just as long as it's in the right light. So hopefully it'll do okay there. And then one day I'll decide to transplant it into dirt, but I think it looks really pretty there. And I can also keep that glass for future water propagations that I decide to do. And then up here on my shelf is, this guy is a Hemolomena selby. I don't like it. I don't like this plant at all. <laughs> I really don't. It 
is kind of fussy. It's a very fussy plant and it doesn't like anything except for water and lots of light or too much light. I don't know. It's, it's burning for some reason. I think it's because I wait too long to water before it dries out. And then this one is my sad umbrella tree. I really love this plant, but I think because I had it in my office, it really didn't like it in there. It didn't like how dry it was. It didn't like the light conditions it was in. It likes a bright space. And I think it also likes to dry out. So we'll see. It has some new growth, which is really exciting. Um, but it used to be really pretty full and lush and I miss it. I miss how it used to look. And then I have a sneak plant here on the corner of my desk. Or not my desk, but my dresser. And I think it really likes that spot there because it's very indirect light, but still gets light. And it just looks really good in that basket. One other spot I forgot to show you guys was the shelf above my dining room table. This is probably next to that Himala Selby, um, is a very hated plant. I wish this plant would just die already. I really do. This is a water propagation. Now I also have another water propagation right here. And then I have one in a pot. And I just really, I hate this plant. <laughs> it's giving me so much hard time. Such a hard time over the last three, four years. I just, I hate it. And it just, it'll stay alive and then just die. And then this is my newest philodendron Brazil. I love this plant. It's so pretty and big. That is it for all of my plants. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it's a little different from my usual content, but... Gardening is gardening, right? I mean, getting your hands dirty and playing with leaves and dirt. So, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.